But turning now to the Flint water crisis, newly released emails show that Governor Snyder's top aides pushed for an urgent fix to Flint's water quality back in 2014. That was just six months after the emergency manager switched the drinking water source from Detroit to the Flint River. Despite these early concerns, the corrosive water was never treated properly. You know this. Residents drank it for nearly two years. So this email dump that came out over the weekend, you know, and you go through all of these various documents and you see Dennis Muchmore especially, the chief of staff, saying, hey, raising a lot of these red flags. You see um, counsel for the governor's office saying, uh, we, we need to take a look at this and looking at the dates of, of these messages going way back. Um, so my question through all of this, and Nolan, let me start with you. If the chief of staff is raising these concerns and counsel to the governor's office are raising these concerns, and aren't they the ones that are supposed to be the closest to the governor, how come the governor didn't know about this? I don't know what he knew or when he knew it. I think we're getting closer to those answers with each email dump. It's, it's I don't know, that's baffled me throughout this thing. Um, you know, I can see that he might not have known there was lead. He might, somebody might not have told him about the Legionnaires. That's all sort of, I get, you know, you can, you can get how that might have happened. But people showing up in, in the Capitol with jugs of brown water, you've seen it on TV, brown water coming out of taps. How much more tests do you need? Why, it would seem like you would just say, shut that off. You know, let's shut that off and fix that. And it seemed like there was a whole lot of, bureaucracy going on and a whole lot of of hand wringing going on, not much action. And I, I really don't get that. Or it's also this don't bug the boss or make sure that you have everything straight before you even get to the boss. Or, you know, there's a couple lines of emails like, I don't want to go over your head. Tell me if it's okay if I can approach. Or um, in my best RPA, relentless positive action, yeah. I'm going to do this. Um, and so it, to me, it looks like this culture of don't tell me if it's don't not good. Don't nobody bring me no bad news. There you go. <laughs> right? There you no, go. I think does, it, does it seem that way? Well, I, I, I think there's no question that comes across in the emails. And, and I, I think people who are around uh, uh, the governor would say that that's, that's one of the things that, that defines the culture in this administration. People are hesitant to, to bring him uh, bad news. Uh, but not uh, enough people can get in his office. Uh, uh, although I'm not sure that's... I don't, I don't think that's terribly unusual, uh, that, that he communicates mostly with the chief of staff and some other... Right, uh, I mean, you can't have agents, everybody running case, in and talking sure to him. Was, you understand that. Was, you know, had, the chief of staff had his ear. Yeah. I think there's a couple, three people up there around him that he truly trusts. And, right, and everybody you know, else, everybody else is like saying, well, you know... Don't you think that's a huge problem if his chief yeah. of staff well, doesn't and, have and, it? And here's, here's, here's the other sort of dimension of, of this part of the story. Um, it is hard to imagine that if this were in another kind of community, right? Uh, if they, if the chief of staff and these other folks were talking about a community that um, was wealthier, was maybe whiter, uh, that that at that point the things they were talking about would not have just been okay. I mean, this was a poor community struggling uh, with finances under emergency management, and I think that defined some of the. I mean, you don't see anyone saying, hold on a second, whatever we do, we've got to stop the, the, the water from, from being uh, polluted. No one ever takes that step, and I just but don't you, yeah. believe that would have happened in Birmingham, for instance. Yeah, but there was so uh, much. I mean, well, Birmingham would have never come to this place. I mean, there was so... No, but there's a reason for there that, was too. So, there was so much, I think, frustration with Flint and so much wrong with Flint that were they were dealing with all at once. What folks don't talk about uh, that was going on simultaneously is this huge crime, violent crime wave they had going on and the administration was pouring tons of resources and attention to that. Uh, meanwhile, trying to, to fix this budget and it was like the water was over here and like, oh, don't bring us another Flint problem. And I think there's an element of that going on here too. Um, the uh, the uh, um, House Minority Leader called on the governor yesterday to resign. The Toledo Blade wrote an editorial saying the governor should resign. Now looking at these emails that have come out, <coughs> do you think you're going to be seeing more <clears throat> more calls for that, Nolan, or do you think that that res resignation conversation I think should an, stop? That's him? an element. I mean, people can have whatever conversation you want. I think that's an interesting element. You haven't seen a whole lot. You, yeah, Grimo came out yesterday, did a little grandstanding. I have no idea what the Toledo Blade feels its standing in this dispute is, but uh, <laughs> they've got some of their own issues down there. But um, 
you know, as far as you look, the unions have been fairly quiet, at least the UA, the big union, <coughs> UAW and the Teamsters. It's like Steve said, I think, a few weeks ago, um, the worst thing that could happen to Democrats is for Snyder to resign and give Cali a three-year head start on this gubernatorial race. I, I think yeah. that's true. I think politically that's not a, a smart thing. I also think that, that uh, the standard for resignation is whether he can uh, uh, continue to govern and, and fix the problem. You elect people to hold them accountable for the mistakes that they make uh, and fixing them, not to say, well, you made this mistake and you got to go. No, that's no, that's no, just no, my... Right.